well, it's been a rivalry for many years. But I don't really know like the tournaments or the games or whatever. But I know like the Jensen Eckhold, I guess. <laughs> that one that one always hits. Uh, <laughs> that one always hits first. Even when I was in Europe, we would like always watch these kind of games like TSM, TL, C9 uh, kind of games, like the top teams. It was always pretty fun to watch. So now being part of those teams, uh, competing those teams is also pretty fun. Definitely. It was like a different feeling going to play against Fnatic than any other team in EU. Just back and forth, I guess, going with them for many years has made the rivalry uh, something that I will kind of cherish, actually. The games against Fnatic were pretty fun. G2 versus Fnatic was also like me against Reckless, because we've been like the face of our teams for many years. You knew going into the game was going to be a bloodbath, and the team that, that is like going to take the other team to the ground is going to win. Maybe that's something we're going to get in NA as well, but it's hard for me to say that right now because I actually lost against Fnatic in 2018, like twice. So that made the rivalry from myself more intense and I've beaten them the two years before. It definitely makes it very more entertaining when you beat them and it makes it a bit more sour when you lose. So it's just more fun. Like, yeah, it's just the nature of the sport, right? Being in a very nice rivalry. It just makes everything more exciting for the players and for the fans. So I, I like it. I like that there is a rivalry like that in the name. I'm pretty much ready to smash them every single time. But I want to make sure that TSM doesn't like take a series of us uh, while I'm on the roster. <laughs> yeah, Perks is a funny guy. He, he has a big mouth. You know, in the past he's been able to also match that. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if he ends up eating those words. Even though we lost our first series, I don't think he was making it too difficult for us, but Sven did a really good job not making us uh, win the series, but I think if he wants to, you know, make that a reality, he needs to play a little bit better. I think Cloud9 as a team and their culture seems to have shifted a lot. Before, uh, they were a much more relaxed environment, much more about kind of having a good time, but it seems like with the removal of Sneaky and, and Pat bringing in the new roster with Sven, they've become much more of a serious team, much closer to how TSM has always been. He makes the team get really serious and be really focused on winning. That's just how he is. He's a player who grinds a ton. And I think Perks fits very well in that culture. I, I know him very well. Uh, Björk is not being actually an active player on TSM. I think it's like a new era for TSM. I don't know if it's for better or for worse. We're going to find that out. From a player perspective, I'm a bit sad that I I won't get to face him in the Rift because I thought actually even last year he was still pretty good. Um, he was the best enemy in my opinion. While I think actually Paril is a very good player on Mages, uh, I think his champion pool is slightly limited, and that's something that's going to be a problem for them in the future. But I also think they're like pretty one-dimensional in what they want to do and how they want to play. If both teams are strong and both teams are kind of competing for the top, then when C9 TSM plays, it's going to be really exciting. So I'm just hoping that I can make TSM a top contender right now. And I know that Perks is doing everything that he can to make C9 the same, and hopefully we'll meet them in some high stakes matches. Cloud9 has lost in finals many, many times, actually, if I think about it, uh, to many teams. But they do have three trophies anyways, and they won their trophy last year. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to tripling their trophy case in the next few years. From being a central part of the biggest rivalry in the European region, uh, straight across the ocean, to being a central part of the biggest rivalry here in North America, Perks joining Cloud9. Uh, it, great to hear uh, his perspective ahead of the match. Uh, Mark, I'm curious your thoughts on what it's like uh, for a player who already has experience uh, in, in matchups like this uh, that get this much attention, you know, from from the region itself. Uh, but to swap into a new one and, and to have one of your earliest games of the split uh, dive deep into that rivalry. I mean, I think he he's probably pretty accustomed to pressure. You know, he's he's been in a lot of my higher stakes matches. Uh, so you know, whether that's we're talking just how some of the G two, uh, you know, 
versus Fnatic finals that have occurred, as well as world finals. You know, he, he's played at every level, every, you know, he's got MSI finals, won that one. So, like, I am sure, you know, slotting into a new rivalry, considering it's just the regular season, I think he'll be okay. Now, hi, as a former Cloud9 member and mid laner, uh, and watching the evolution of the team that tries to carry on the dynasty and the legacy that you helped build. I mean, how do you feel just on the outset uh, uh, about Perks coming in and taking up the helm here and trying to continue that legacy and add, as he said, triple the amount of trophies to the trophy case? Honestly, I wonder if the players on TSM and Cloud9, you know, care about the rivalry because it's, to me, when I was on CNN, the rivalry was with the players more than the organization, obviously. And nowadays, how much attachment do these current players have to that rivalry? Do they even think about it? So I, I'm, I'm not sure they do. So um, I don't know. I think it's more of like an org versus org thing rather than a player versus player thing at the moment. And maybe that'll change over the course of the next few years. But uh, hopefully they get attached to the rivalry. Because like he said, right, rivalries are super cool. So it'd be cool if they like get really into it. Well, we are diving into another edition of that Cloud9 versus TSM matchup. One that we saw go the full five games in lock-in as Bjergsen sided falling just short for the TSM side. Let's kick things off by talking about the jungle position, specifically Blabber's impact on C9's most recent game. Emily? Yeah, so, you know, Blabber and Spica, the two most tenured players on their lineups. Um, I really liked this adaptation from Blabber. Basically, as soon as they know that Niles is not going to have Flash, he immediately passed top level two uh, after clearing his first camp. Um, this is the kind of thing and reaction that I really want to see from Blabber that will continue to kind of elevate him as, I mean, we already consider him one of the best junglers in the region, but um, he's still a really young player and still has, a, like, a wealth of experience to go through. Uh, so it's really cool to see like little things like this, little pathing adjustments um, that are really smart and intelligent uh, right off the get go. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he continues to develop uh, and be an even stronger jungler this year. Mark, That's in fact, uh, oh. our entire, oh, I'm so sorry. Hi, jump in here. Oh, no worries. I just want to say really quickly from a player perspective, I remember back in the day, if I ever died to level two gank, it's 100% my fault every single time. <laughs> and it's cool to hear that like, Analysts call it as like a very smart gank because I always took the fault for dying to a level two <laughs> gank. So it's cool to see like the juxtapose of that. <laughs> well, so the, but, but then how do you feel about it now that you're in this position? Hi, you're on the desk. Who do you think <laughs> had it right? Is it the player in self criticism or is it the analysts in uh, in yeah, lauding uh, the, the intelligent gank? <laughs> I mean, it, it works both ways, right? It's a smart okay. gank, but it's also the player being dumb. You know, like if if I don't have flash level one. <laughs> And they have a jungler that can do a level two gank. I'm going to ward because if I die to that, my jungler's going to be mad at me for, you know, he, he probably warned you about it. So I, I don't yeah. know, man. Yeah, don't do dumb stuff out on the rift. All right. Uh, we mentioned that Blabber, very young player, lots of room to grow. Mark, similarly, another extraordinarily young player when it comes, you know, uh, to a career perspective. Spico, we also mentioned in their last game, he's the longest standing member of the TSM roster at this point. Yeah, with one split. <laughs> no, whopping one split <laughs> makes one him the longest-standing <laughs> member of TSM. It's kind of crazy to think about. Um, and, you know, it's true for Flabber as well. And I also say, for the most part, they're probably two of the better performing members on their teams right now. Blabber and Spica both had pretty good lock-in tournaments. Uh, and so I think both their early games are obviously going to be keyed off them just as the nature of being junglers. But also, I think in a lot of ways, uh, based off their level of play right now, both teams are going to be relying on them to kind of kickstart their games. And, you know, Spica did not have a great game yesterday. He was unable to find anything on his Talia despite having some good setup in the bot lane. So hoping to see a little bit more out of him today. And Mark, I want to follow up kind of on the point that I feel like High was beginning to make around, uh, in some senses, uh, with the rosters being stripped of their original, you know, uh, player names, uh, that there's, there is a different feeling around the matchup this time around. And I think uh, for fans on both sides of the coin, it's a bit of a rebuilding period in terms of what fandom means and what this rivalry actually represents. Yeah, I mean, even on Reddit yesterday following the loss, I, I saw a couple highly uploaded comments that were like, you know, I should feel pain at that loss, but I'm actually indifferent because I just like, I don't have a connection to this roster. And so I think in these kinds of, you know, early season games, you want to excite your fans, especially in a rivalry matchup. So I think there's a huge incentive for TSM players to actually go out there and put their best foot forward and try and dominate this matchup. Well, they've already played five games against each other here in 2021. C9 taking three, TSM taking two. We'll see if TSM has what it takes to even the score up at three and three on the outset of the 2021 year. Now let's hand it over to Freak and Kobe for the cast.
Thank you very much, Dash, and welcome. Welcome for game four of the day. Cloud9 is battling TSM. It's going to be an exciting battle. I am free. Kobe, how you doing? Doing great. Uh, I mean, this is a kind of a rematch of our lock-in series that we had with Cloud9 and TSM. I'm sure that TSM wants some revenge versus Cloud9 for kicking them out of the tournament. If you remember back to that series, there were some important things. Grog is priority for both top laners. Um, Cloud9 did a lot to try and protect Fudge um, as he is still new to the LCS. Plus, sure. a lot of jungle focus uh, as far as the bans, of course, coming through. TSM being on red side, it kind of falls to them the duty to ban out the Pantheon to Leah Olaf, uh, triple combo. But now with a lot more people playing uh, Udyr, that's also going to be something that's led through. Now that's kind of bulged to four OP power picks for jungle. You can't yeah. swipe them all uh, in first round of bans. And Cloud9 so, have already shown they're very willing. Yeah, Kobe, this is something that, that has happened year in and year out in LCS or the pro leagues, where it's like, look, there's four S tier junglers. Why are you wasting three bans to still give them one? Like, why not ban other things that are useful and just trade good junglers? Unless you really think there is one that's going to win all the matchups and it's impossible otherwise. Like, Pantheon wins everything, sure, but to keep throwing your bans down the line and they still get Talia or they still get Udyr feels wasteful. I'm not sure if I'm missing something, but that just feels like it's too much going on. It depends where the strengths lie to, like Pantheon, really good at being proactive, setting up ganks, getting kills early. Uh, sure. Udyr, Olaf, these ones, much more power farming. So I think that TSM showing yesterday that but are they TSM, actually... Kobe, are TSM afraid of blabber power farming? Are they afraid of blabber ganking? Because Vika can also do those things by like, well, you got Pantheon, we got Olaf, right? Like, that's, I understand these are strong, but that's what I don't I'm know, make a say. choice? Okay. That's what I try to say. TSM showed yesterday that they are not a proactive early game team. Once again, they they were set up with all these possibilities, and they weren't able, you know, to make the early game moves uh, before you know FlyQuest was able to get to so such a strong team fighting synergy uh, for them. So I think that's something to to look at from yesterday. And, well, either way, when we look back at TSM's game, they were indeed very, very slow, but they at least got their leads off of macro play. They had a gold lead for 25 minutes straight, and as their bans come through, they get rid of one of the global mids in TF, and Udyr is left up, though Talia is back there. As you mentioned, there's probably four S-tier junglers. If you're going to trade Talia back for Udyr, then hey, you've managed to get yourself in that kind of situation where you burn out two bans, but you're both getting a strong jungler here. Uh, a smatter of bans across the board on the Cloud9 side. We'll see what really comes through at the end of the day. Uh, right now, TSM going to hover an AD carry. I don't know if you'd really rush pick a Kalista. Kaisa makes a lot more sense down here, and that's going to be in for Lost. Yeah, if they early lock in Kalista, I feel like that does box them pretty heavily into relying on trying to snowball around bottom side, around early dragons. And that is really hard versus Cloud9. Uh, Cloud9 have had some of the most aggressive and quickest early games of any team in the lead with Blabber absolutely popping off. I think Blabber, Blabber's performance currently is, is some of the best that we have ever seen from him. So they're going to have to do something uh, to try and contain this jungle. Generally, you're going to want to get some winning solo lane matchups uh, and blind pick in the Camille does leave you open to the Jax answer once again Fudge already tried to use it um, and Cloud9 were very willing to send Blabber yep. up there early on to try and focus and make sure um, you can get to at least your level six there where uh, you can outstat the Camille. Yep, look back to Cloud9 vs. Golden Guardians yesterday and Blabber level one ganked. He was two, but the laners were level one in that top lane. And, and there was just a lot of pressure up there as Fudge battled Niles and the junglers had to make sure that Cloud9 got the better of it. You've got the Azir blinded as well here. Perks wants to grab that as soon as possible. We know Talia kind of has to be grabbed. So Perks, even though he blinds the Azir, he kind of knows he's not going to get counterpicked until more bans come through because there's no way you let Talia go through uh, into the ban phase because then you're not getting another S tier jungle yourself. So knew where that draft was going. Top's going to be fun. We'll see how much Perk's going to do on the Azir with some coverage on his own yep. side. TSM, I'm kind of expecting uh, a lot of AD carry bans on their side. They got, you know, one of the premier ones in the Kai'Sa. We might see, yeah, Senna, uh, Misfortune. Um, I'm thinking of uh, Samira maybe in that list as well. Yeah, and on the side of Cloud9, like you're saying, probably the Orianna, Syndra, these types of things banned out to uh, to give Perks the more control of the wave towards mid lane. Um, this already is looking like TSM showing multiple tools for these, you know, 
very aggressive picks. Talia, Camille, Kaisa all look like they want to jump in on stuff. You're going to need some guaranteed CC uh, to set those up. So Galio is a really smart ban here from, from Cloud9. You take away the combination, Camille, Galio, plus another global that you don't want to have to deal with. All righty. Well, there is the Galio gone. We're waiting for the second ban out of TSM as we want to see what bot lane they're trying to hide and uh, protect against with. Of course, they would have first dibs on a support pick as well, and that means with a Thresh ban, they get to grab support and, and keep Thresh off the table as well. Perks, by the way, despite the fact that I think, you know, people often f think of him as a more sort of dynamic, aggressive player, Azir is actually his highest win rate champion among his top six most played. And at that point, you're talking about things like Zaya, where he's but playing But the rhyme lane, is so. so good, Freak. Yeah, I know. <laughs> his, my Azir is bad, his, my his rise, rise is worse, yes. His rise is, is quite bad. It is one of his lower win rate mid laners, but um, of any mid laner I can see not named Zillion, it's his highest win rate pick. So he's actually an incredibly proficient Azir. His KDA is trash but his win rate is very high. <laughs> and there's the Oriana. Uh, don't, don't always trust the rhyme streak. <laughs> uh, just go to say, they yep. make great memes, but not great draft strategies always. <laughs> yeah. And I think that he's, he's definitely well equipped on the champion. Um, and plus, they, they have already committed to this Jax Camille mashup topside. And Azir is is very selfless mid. Like he he has his own escapes built in. Can have wave control really well. You protect him with a uh, Oriana ban as well. So uh, I think Perks is set up to to be very good for this squad. More yeah. engaged. That's what I was talking about. Hard CC, long range here. Engage for Sword Art. He's supposed to be the one to pull the trigger for TSM. That's why they signed him to this team. They've drafted around so many possibilities of picking people off here with, uh, you know, uh, the Leona added on top. This one has to be action packed. Yeah, so Misfortune Alistair comes through and there is a small concern on the Misfortune being grabbed because look at the opposing lineup. Look at, like if you watched the games yesterday, uh, TSM was in this exact situation where Lost didn't get to have any fun playing Misfortune against a Camille. There's some follow-up in the Leona, there's some follow-up in the Talia, there's follow-up even in the Kai's if it needs to be. Misfortune does not kite away easily. So Sven, I want to see how you can pilot it because player skill can sometimes make the difference. Sven obviously was very good on the MF in lock-in tournament, pentakills and back-to-back -back games. Yes, well done there, but does who need to delete you is going to be a question I have because he could have just gone Zaya, right? Could have picked a defensive option to just immune the knockback or, you know, immune a CC or immune the cage or anything and survive it. He's like, no, 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 we're going the offensive version. We're going MF and it's going to work out. So I want to see how it plays out because Lost couldn't make it work. Sven might. There's an important difference here is that Sven has an Alistar, which can headbutt the Camille back out of her own Hex Hextech ultimatum so that it breaks it and he should be able to live. If you so, play body bodyguard Alistar, then, then you can protect uh, your misfortune. Kobe, it's not really going to be up a lot to Sven's play. Kobe, I, I wanted us rag on Sword Art, but I wanted to wait. Lost had an Alistar too, okay? Sword Art, <laughs> Sword Art. I want, I want to be clear about something. Sword Art has not had a good year on TSM, okay? Looking across the LCS so far this year, Spika has been the best player. I think PoE has been second best. When Sword Art came in, like, this was the guy who was supposed to replace Bjergsen as his dominant player that everyone's going to look to, that the team is going to be built around him. Much like Bjergsen for six years straight was the mid laner in the LCS, Sword Art was supposed to be the support. He has the worst KDA in the team. He has the worst kill participation on the team. He is not getting things done. He is dying and not helping things happen. Sword Art is not having a good 2021 on TSM, coming just off of a World Finals appearance. I need to see him step up. I want to see what else he can do in this game. He's got himself a Leona. It can look good, but I need more out of that player. All right. No whiffed Leona ultimates here. Sword Art or Freak is going to lose his mind. Yes. Let's take a look. He's coming out of the base a little later. They do have a swap over to another sweeper, double sweeper opener for TSM. That smells like possible uh, late invades then. Well, you know, Speak is the right champion for what the rocks are cooking. And Blabber gonna have to, yeah, I, yeah, okay. We're uh, having Blabber walk away. The Sweeper does not find a ward though. I love the, the, the meta adaptations where you're like, you know, TSM is a team that goes sweepers a lot. We're gonna wait on our wards, let him go for the sweep. Cool, we can ward afterwards. Yeah, okay, so we do see the, the attempt there. Uh, sweeps on forward, Sword Art gonna take his down to the bottom side too. But and when you have a support going sweeper this early on, you know, dropping the, the ward and then switching over, 
that really does kind of give away bottom side focus. If you're investing in offensive trinket at level one, then you really want to make plays. So they're going to put it, put it right to the test immediately, Freak. Uh, your price tag on Sword Art and see if it is worth it here because I expect Speaker to get down there uh, and try and take advantage of that. Yep, we are seeing a pretty heavy clear from Speaker. Is taking Krugs uh, as part of the clear, so it's going to be this full six camps most likely. Uh, Want to point out that Huni is doing the exact same flashless Camille. Now, theoretically, Udyr could have done blue buff into gank top and, you know, done the exact same, you know, fudge, flash stun, blabber, bear slaps, and hope they have enough, but. Regardless, not going to find much more. We already saw Huni learn W at level 1. He used it as part of the leash, so didn't take an escape tool at all. Managed to be okay, though. Bot lane push is going TSM's way first. Huni now playing defensively under his turret. Theoretically, this would be a very hard dive, all things considered. It would be level 2 to level 1 with a jungler, but it's not going to happen. And either way, Huni's going to get his XP and now has his escapes learned, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, he could just keep W spam trading. Uh, the early stages versus the Jax, just landing your outer cone of W, uh, trying to get off a Q, not over committing to it, uh, unless you're able to bait out the counter strike. Otherwise, Fudge will have the last say about it. Blabber just power clearing as normal on Udyr. Uh, no, no kind of variations here. He can easily finish a full clear before Scuttle spawn. It's one of the big reasons why he's risen to prominence. Mm -hmm. um, should be able to finish up on top side, give Fudge the full extra comfort of knowing that they've got top crab as well. And with that, Scryers or popped on bottom side too. No surprises for either team. They know Spika's down there. Uh, bottom side is not really in danger of a dive on, on Cloud9's efforts either. Nice by Blabber, knows red buff, plus the Talisman burn's gonna be enough to knock down the rest of Scuttle. He was right, saves an auto, saves a few seconds, and he's her top side just in case. You know, in case it was pathed up there, we know Huni is slow pushing out, and. This is going to be a tough gank to make work, but looks like they're going to try. Starts the stacks going. Fudge going to find himself the stun. No, he won't. This is going to make the fight a lot harder, but can he bait out the hook shot? Huni not going to burn the cooldown just yet. Here comes the bear. Can he get in the way? The flash is going to block it. That was beautiful by Blabber, and he does it again. Cloud9 get first blood top lane. So good by Blabber. You have to interrupt Camille after she gets the hook shot connected to the wall. He just flashes around right to the spot where her little sword legs are sticking in the wall and is able to bear slap her down. Fudge, I thought this was a bit preemptive um, and he's not able to get the uh, hook shot out early. Huni kind of fish, uh, sussing it out, but uh, Blabber sticking around after he did the deep ward on enemy Krugs. Patience pays off, Freak. Blabber strikes once again. This man has just been outstanding he's for so Cloud9. He's so good. He's just so good, Kobe. Blabber is such an outstanding player. That gank was awesome. It's the, like the most telegraphed play in the world, yet it still works anyway. It's like, hey, the jungler is right at bot side. He's going to take Scuttle. It's it's 3.30 in the game. I'll bet you Udyr's top side, and somehow Fudge managed to bait him in. Blabber plays it perfectly, and off we are onto the board. You might say, hey, maybe that's a little bit of Hootie's fault. That might be true. Regardless, though, Cloud9 are on a 600 gold lead, and Blabber is running around. I like that the Tiger run is just him dabbing as he runs across. I don't know if you've noticed, but that's a good point. Uh, I, believe me, I've played Hootie for 10 years. For yeah. <laughs> I've noticed. This is before uh, it was uh, cool, and then ironically <laughs> cool. Honestly, too, I also love to see when top laners get punished for not bringing Flash. It, it always... It always mm. pops up as a fad where, you know, either there are junglers doing it where the Graves Ignite fad for a while. Um, oh, yeah, I've got a dash in my kit. Uh, I can take Ignite and win my duels. And, and you you kind of flex on people um, in a 1v1 and then, and then cry when you don't have your flash for instances like we just saw on the top side. But attacking top laners that go that route and try and try and get the Ignite so they can ego on your 1v1 so they can turn your 1v1 around is, is kind of... I don't know, it's satisfying to see yeah. <laughs> at a certain level, um, especially I know for uh, for the top laners that, that don't go for the Ignite. Uh, I mean, I have a sort of similar version. I know it's very common now, but it's seeing Phaser's Alistair's die pre-6, where it's like, you could go Aftershock and, you know, survive Hebat Pulverize, but it's like, no, 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 I'm going for the move speed, and it's like, cool, you're squishy, let's go. Perks is out of mana, so PUE gets a pretty good hit. He's actually pretty close to killing. Rocket, ooh, that sidestep had to happen. That big one would have killed, so good sidestep by perks. PUE wouldn't have had the damage on a flash auto to kill, so that is the fight over. But it is going to be a rough recall out of perks. He will lose a little bit of CS. Perks camera, he's just chilling too. <laughs> no sweat off his brow. I 
definitely saw death there. Very close to, uh, to that big one hitting, but he just dodges it out. No problem there. And it is going to be Cloud9 starting up the Dragon because of it. He's right back into mid lane there. Azir has priority. Vulcan even goes for the trade to keep TSM's bottom lane from fishing around. End of the day, Ocean Drake's going to be grabbed. The mid lane pressure, it's going to be enough. Yes, the perks TP obviously quite relevant there. So Blabber tigers it. Looks like he's going to save his smite. Bam, grabs it. Okay, early Ocean Dragon, seven minutes in. Pretty good start here. Cloud9 should feel comfortable with how this one is going. Obviously, the first blood in the top lane is great. And the lanes pretty much everywhere are feeling good as well. A two camp lead for Blabber. And that's after having to burn his flash to get a kill. That's with him also taking the dragon. So everything looking great for C9. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely hard work, even with an Ignite. Uh, and the whole reason you take Ignite for Camille versus this matchup for Jax is to be able uh, to have possible early kill pressure and to be able to change the tides before Jax uh, gets to level 6, starts scaling up. But Fudge is so happy with this start, even though uh, ideal world, he gets the last hit uh, you know, to, to further fund him. Uh, it's the kill alone does a lot to set him up now uh, at level seven as well. Feeling very, very confident there uh, to be able to scale up to later because Counter Strike is just too good a, of an answer to uh, to any of Camille's attempts. Being able to dodge the autos, uh, of course, makes it so Camille can't proc her passive shield uh, for the beginning of the trade, which uh, ensures that she takes a lot of damage from it. And once you get access to your ultimate, Jax's ultimate is one of the really underestimated ults in the game because there's not a big visual to it. Here's a deep dive. Oh, Perks outplays Hooney. He's, he's just dead, right? Like, Perks is going to be pretty hurt as well. Perks is running, and it will be a trade back. But he has to flash away. Careful, the flash combo Vulcan has arrived. Get him down. Two to one C9 in that fight. He's got more work to do. Bottom lane now is under attack. TSM pushing Sven off of this turret. They get one turret plate. And Speak is waiting around as well, hoping they can catch the Moo Cow. All right, over the wall, Sword Art. He's got Speak in nearby, though. They're not going to go for the play. Yeah, okay, Vulcan going to play it defensively. Going to knock down the ward. Sven may just be safe under the turret, so no plays to be had. Obviously, great roam by Vulcan to be there for the mid lane play, but now 3v1 dive potential. They're going to find the stun, but it's level 6 Alistair! Ooh. You're diving a level 6 Alistair. Lost is ignited. He's dead. Goodbye. Vulcan is the kill leader of Cloud9. Sword Art has to jump away, and the KDAs keep plummeting on TSM. Break, it's over at 2k, gold lead and dragon advantage at nine minutes into the game for Cloud9. Kobe, this is, yeah, I found third? out why TSM aren't playing aggressively in the early games. It's, it's backfiring every single time. Uh, you can't just go I for see. these plays. <laughs> I see. You never know what you don't want until you see it, <laughs> I guess. All right, package, though. This is a big thing for Corky. Uh, anytime this champion comes back in a pro play, I love when uh, teams can actually sink it towards one of the objective plays they want to go for. Unfortunately in, for TSM in this game, they've lost so much control with uh, the failed dives that they have pulled <laughs> off. Uh, both in mid and around bottom now, that you're not going to get any value out of that package. Uh, yep. Power of Evil does use it, though, to try and sync it up uh, for the next one. Here's the deep dive. Hooney all the way in. Perks immediately shoves him back. Perks also saved his flash from the last time with the uh, dodge on the big one, so he's able to flash the Q here. Uh, makes it so Power of Evil has to continue further into the tower, take another shot to finish off that kill, and he gets punished. Oh, okay, this is a good dive, but Sven had the cleanse from last time, burns both sums, a great fight for Sword Art there, puts the combos down. Uh, Sven, I believe, was able to cleanse Ignite and the stun, so bad sequencing, I think, by Sword Art. I have to watch that again in the replay. Uh, may have done it correctly, I'm not 100% sure. Either way, Sven still down both summoners, but health bar going right back up thanks to potions and an Alistair. Look at this gold graph, too. Your Ooh. boy Blabber with the first blood also got the one down there. Two kills and the, just being Udyr, honestly. I was going to say the jungle CS lead, but uh, Udyr power clear uh, also finding its mark. He's definitely one of the players that doesn't sacrifice his jungle route while still getting in effective ganks. Uh, obviously, he was previously known for it on Olaf. Here's the combo on the loss. All right, it's going to force the ult out of Lost till some damage. Now, Sword Art has to walk away, and Eclipse is going to end, so he's going to act being squishy. Blabber's here, but so is Spica. 
Is there an outplay to be had? Flash on the Uter, but does have blue smite. Got to slow down Sword Art. Puts a stun back in. Recombos, but a double pulverize. Sets up the back line. And Sword Art will drop again. Now Vulcan is going to be the E target as PoE and Huni show up. Fudge now going to join as well, but Huni will find that first kill. Turns back around. Fudge will not find the stun, and now PoE is here. This is a good fight for TSM. They're getting a lot done, but wow, somehow Huni gets killed anyway, and they don't get any more for it. Yeah, the reinforcements arrive here for Cloud9, chasing down TSM to make sure the comeback does not start here. They cut it off. It's still some good gold back for TSM, uh, and it's a Trinity Force completed for Huni. So, you know, gold turning into real power spikes for them here. Unfortunately for him, it also is timed up with the Blade of the Ruin King for Fudge. Uh, and, and that is still going to be problematic for him in the 1v1 considering the extra level here. Blabber actually also picked up the ring to start stacking uh, for Udyr. Now, your Phoenix does scale pretty decently with AP, uh, so I kind of like it. And I I actually want to see my first ever Medjai as Udyr. I, I really, really am hoping for it. If Cloud9 continue to increase their lead, maybe we see it. Uh, probably not, though. TSM going to take the dragon. Hey, good job, TSM, getting back on the map in time. They are going to make sure they can tie up the drag account, so well played. Good job, Lost, Speak It, and Co. to make this one come through. Kobe, to your point, when Majaz gets 10 stacks, you get move speed on it. And that is Udyr's number one stat. Ooh, that's a great ult. Great ult by Sword Art into the stun combo. No way out, and finally, an isolated kill picked up there on Sven. There you go. Approved by Freak. Sword Art, big pick on the Leona. That's what they need for TSM to get back into this game. Remember, Camille with the Talia, with the Leona and Kaisa, all looking for these possible long range picks. And accuracy of the Leona ultimate does so much to get you there. Applies your passive uh, stacks for Kaisa to jump over with the Killer Instincts. Here's a review of the bottom side though. And this is where um, TSM, they commit everything. This is, this is going to be the comeback play for them. Double TP from both solo laners. They started channeling earlier. They get the kill on the Sven. Really nice Hextech ultimatum there from Huni to be able to uh, dodge out on the Counter-Strike stun, but also get the kill on the Misfortune. Fortunately for them, Perks and, and Fudge do also arrive to, to chase them off and cut the TSM party short on the bottom side, ensuring that Cloud9 can continue to keep their lead. All that being said, though, the dragon stacking was cut off pretty quickly there by TSM, uh, you know, taking advantage of the recall to go in and steal away that cloud. So that does buy them a little bit of extra time to try and reformulate, refocus um, on, on picking up one of these uh, possible kills here. I would say get that next quirky package and go ham. That's a slow. That's going to be enough, maybe. MFO over the top is going to disengage, though. Goodbye, Sven, to keep the team safe. And Perks will knock down bot lane outer turret. The plates fell before the fifth plate could be taken, but uh, the earlier summon by Blabber at about 12.30 was well-timed. Didn't have a better spot for a Herald, so summoned it then. Good job. And Perks just kept pushing down to the bottom side. And look at the CS. 151. No one's even hit 130 yet. He has got huge farm. He got solo turret gold down in bot lane. A bunch of the plates as well. I mean, Perks is gigantic, despite a, you know, unassuming 1-1-0 scoreline. He is going to be a huge factor in this game. Yeah, I, I mean, saving his flash all the way until he gets double dove by Camille and Corky with the ultimatum also being used by the Camille was really big for him, buying a lot of time. Um, up until then, he had been punishing the Corky in lane. He forced Power of Evil's teleport early. That's why they got their first dragon, by the way. Um, I give credit to Perks for that one uh, as far as the C9 objectives go. TSM, oh. though. Looking at one of their own, this uh, uh, is, you know, second Rift Trail, so not going to be turret plate money, but still valuable for trying to get some territory back on the map for them because TSM are faced with this problem of Camille not really being able to answer Jax, um, you know, despite having the Ignite here to try and be the tide turner in the 1v1. Um, it's it's just too, too strong already for Fudge hitting level 11. Blabber going in on Sword Art. Okay, flash away from Perks to not be comboed out. That is the summoner down. Sword Art manages to do a pretty good job out of that one. But now the package is here. PoE is in the back line, and Perks is going to drop. TSM in the mid game found their aggressive plays, and they have gotten kill after kill after kill. Corky package on objectives, Freak. Really nice. This is what you want to see. They sync it up with starting this Rift Herald, and TSM get what they want. Cloud9 bite. They, they actually 
get a pretty good trade there uh, against multiple members. Uh, and yet, with PoE coming in with the Corky package, is able to punish. Does Blabber actually make him flash? He does, and he, he goes for the dive. Fast. He's got Tiger, he's got Phoenix, and he's got the kill in his sights. <laughs> Nicely done. A solo kill for the jungler. Good job, Blabber. I run, I stun, I solo kill power of evil. <laughs> Even with the summoners, no problem. That's what you like to see from the Udyr play. And the, guess what, Freak? That is six stacks on the Dark Seal. So yeah. maybe we do get to see the Soul Stealer um, just to further empower those Phoenix Blasts. Uh, I mm -hmm. would say, you know, you get a little bit of extra shielding too with your turtle stance as a as a fairly competitive AP ratio on it. Um, but yeah, you know, your, your break point of the move speed is yeah. uh, really He's the bonus that you're looking for. He's Dragon, got the moon though. shorts. He's got the moon, moon shorts, shorts ready to go. Yeah, you hike those up. You can see why they have speed on them, because because they're not actually full length pants. I like yeah. that your your adaptation on on a sales moon pants. They're, yeah, yeah. they're more moon shorts. They have a lot of flexibility for running fast. They're like those cool shark skin um, like speedos that you saw in the Olympics like 12 years ago. Like they're all hyped up like way back when. Oh, uh, cool, yeah. huh? Yeah. That's Listen, a... I was a competitive swimmer uh, up throughout high school. Uh, I find those cool. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I don't think I've seen a, a Speedo ever that I would uh, describe as So to as be cool. fair, they don't look like briefs. Like, they go down to mid-thigh because they're more aerodynamic than your legs are. So, you know, it, it increases the cool factor a lot. They look not too dissimilar to the moon shorts that Blabber is wearing right now. We are onto the dragon. That's the important part, Kobe. I apologize for, for sidestepping you on that one. Sven going to go ahead and fight the Infernal Drake, no problem. Fudge playing the far flank, uh, knocking down a ward on the far side, and honestly, TSM, not willing to fight this one. Keep in mind the gold difference is still over 5,000. And so if Cloud and position, TSM have to give it away. They get first dibs on mid, but this is probably going to go down too slowly. They will not knock down the turret. Yeah, uh, TSM just keep on rotating up to north away from Cloud9 towards the top of the map to try and get some gold for themselves. No real uh, ground gained, though. Do they catch him? Ooh. He's got smite. Good smite goes through for Blabber, taking about Bunch of damage down to 1,400. A slow goes down to the back line of TSM, keeping them away. So speaking PoE can't join back in. And end of the day, we are back to neutral here. I might have missed, where did the Herald go that TSM summoned? Because none of the turrets have dropped, but it's not the inventory anymore. Nice head, but Pulverize comes through in a PoE. Tries to cut away, it's not going to be nearly enough. Vulcan once again resumes his spot on the top of the scoreboard. Three kills in this game. Just the stampede here, cow and bear running down the airplane. There's nothing feel we could do. No flash left. They get another engage, and he wants another piece. Vulcan hex flash. Ooh, he found a pulverize, but it's going to be enough for him. He's going to walk away. He's going to head back to a minion to get some more distance. Take a CS away from Sven. Yeah, we're okay. Deal with it. We're done here. Okay. Um, back to the speedos. <laughs> Did you? Oh, know? yeah, great. Please. <laughs> Just because uh, we had an Australian writer um, that, that his name was Budgie Smuggler. And I had no idea that was the Australian term for Speedos. Turns mm. out a budgie is a small bird that they have down there. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not one of the more obvious, like, kind of crude, like, banana uh, hammock. Uh, yeah, right. For it, it's much more, uh, I, I like the extra levels to the Australian ones. Uh-huh. I mean, it's great because it's still a bird, which well, I'm, I'm not going to say it on air, but you know what I'm talking about. There's more bird euphemisms okay. out there uh, for, for downstairs. So uh, it's, it's still, you know, it's still nearby, which, which I'm appreciative. It's, it's in the family. It's still avian. Um, so 6,000 gold difference here with uh, three minutes to go until the next Infernal Dragon spawns. And oh, oh, wait. Um, all right, Sword Art. Uh, we'll just give you a pass on that one. All right. Pass is being handed out by Freak once again. The <laughs> Master Day. Uh, let's see about the next package. It has 240 second cooldown total. Um, I, ha I haven't heard the alarm go off uh, recently to see when PoE can actually try and make another move. Because if you look at yeah. the gold graph, it's been all Cloud9 all day. They can't win the side lane. Um, they, they haven't been able to win, win grouped either. So they just they have so few options. This is why I keep bringing up this, this cooldown that you know Corky can make game-changing plays with. And it requires the entire team to have full confidence. You just kind of have to go for the pick. It's TSM looking for picks, looking for numbers advantage on people. Um, long range Leona ultimate into Kaisa and Corky following up, but Cloud9 is burning this sucker down. 4K health and counting. 
All right, here we go. Vulcan's going to try to zone them away. He headbutts. He's going to look for the pull of race. He doesn't get to speak in time, but there's still going to be this fight coming through for Blabber. He's able to pick it up, and they get the kill on the jungler as well. It's time to run away, but Vulcan's going to have a hard time living through this one. Hooney's going to find himself that kill, and now it's time to kite away. Stand up by Blabber, going to kite out, though. Fudge, got to be careful. Puts in the dodge zone. Re engage towards Sword Art, and they will find that kill. Two kills in so far. Going to back for one, but they're looking for a bit more. Lost is safe in the back line, but he's got to run away. He's got one HP left. He is still cutting away. He's burning a little bit. Fudge. Wants to reach him, cannot quite do it, but now PUE stuck under the turret has to run away as well. Who in nearby is a bodyguard. Fudge basically kills him with Q auto. Flash for PUE, flash to follow. Ult comes in for Hooney. That should guarantee a kill, but it will be traded back. A huge battle for Cloud9. Four to two, I believe, the overall damage plus Baron on top. Yeah, and that means, too, them going for the dive and trading kills is actually beneficial to the team with Baron. Usually you'd like to get those Baron buffs off the table, and, and that feels good, but Ooh. interrupt here on to Sven. Can he outplay? Yes, he can. Thank you, Gale, Gale Force. Force. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a AD carry, you know, point to the stars. Thank you, Gale Force. A great addition. <laughs> Riot allows Misfortune to escape this one. Uh, honestly, though, with that Baron buff, they still were able to get the mid-secondary tower, and I expect the reset here for Cloud9 to get out in time for Dragon number three. 36 seconds on the timer for them. Fudge does not have teleport, but 30 seconds is enough for him to get close enough to the Dragon for Cloud9 to threaten that fight since they have such an advantage. Here's another look at it. As you said, Vulcan wasn't able to combo speak and keep him out of the pit, so he got in there for an attempt uh, at a smite steal, but uh, Blabber and Cloud9, still enough damage there. Blabber, yep. steady hands, is able to land the smite and secure it, and now... Oh, Blabber. Sword Art, good play in the front, stuns the front line, kites as much as he can, tries to disengage. PUE with a package, gonna completely delay them. You can't walk through this. You have to wait, you have to wait, you have to wait. And that means Vulcan's alone. Vulcan's stuck so much, has to burn the ulti. He will still burn down, though. Has to run away, slowed yet again. One more auto, there's lost on a rampage. The reengage could be good, though. Speak is at a 400 HP, and now Hooney's pretty far up as well. Nice disengage so far, TSM. They are 5v4, but against Baron. Cloud9 still want to fight. They're stuck what here. The when do they go back <laughs> in? Blabber runs the front line, looks for Huni. Good damage there. Ult comes across. Fudge already killed off Spika. He's in the back line, but now he's done back up. Two kills picked up so far. The oh. huge shuffle comes through for Perks, and that is the Bud Light Ace for Cloud9. That alcove looking like a TSM graveyard freak as Perks goes in to sweep them all back on the Azir. And it is all C9 from here on out. Baron buff in hand means they get to take the whole map, pushing multiple objectives at once. Bottom side inhibitor turret will go down following the dragon as well. Blabber's gonna just take away your entire jungle while you're sitting in the death chamber. Oh, they actually don't stick around for it, calling off uh, the extra damage here. They go for another reset, Baron buff timing out, uh, and they're happy with just the dragon pickup plus jungle counter. Okay. So, Starts early. Turbo Chem Tank, Freak, great yep. addition for Udyr. Gets the rush it, speed right in here for Blabber. And I was kind of hoping, you know, the, the package was going to make the series more competitive. It does delay as you're talking about the rest of the team. Full stop sign up there for Cloud9 members as Vulcan actually commits to the engage, but he's all alone since no one can walk over the red carpet. TSM, though, sustain quite significant damage, and they've got nothing left for this fight. Uh, you see Cloud9 taking their time. They walk around, sectioning off the TSM members, cut inside this alcove, uh, and they then send Blabber in first, tankiest member, Fudge then follows, allowing, you see, Perks and Sven to just fire away from the backside the entire time until there's only two members left on the run. Perks goes in, sweeps them all back. Huh? Face check? Okay. Good no work. face check, no death. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. He's going to be okay. Not going to blast plant into the fog of war. Perk's going to have to be careful. Good stun by Sword Art. There's the combo. There's the deletion. Well played, TSM. A nice blast plant gets Vulcan to safety. Yep, that's exactly what you have to do. Keep on looking for picks. TSM just has to group up. Go Goon Squad if you have to. Just everybody pile on first target. That's how you can try and make a comeback in this game. Cloud9 have not gotten soul yet. Uh, so they have to keep their hopes alive on the side of TSM. Keep looking for those picks. And that one was very big because that gets you an outer tower worth of gold as well. It may seem like a drop in the bucket uh, <laughs> compared to this ginormous gold lead that C9 have. Uh, but every drop counts, Freak. So you you got to fill up. You got to start filling up that bucket some way. That's true. 
And you just hope it's not too leaky, you know? Hope you're not losing what you're putting back in. You know, hope the bucket's maybe tall enough, that it's made us some No counter kills materials. being given over. That's exactly, the, I, I right? like it, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you gotta make sure it's not a sieve down there. Okay, Sword Art's gonna find Blabber yet again. Big stun combo comes across, gonna save the ulti. Doesn't have it, actually, that's why. And look at the damage up. Puts, puts lost at like two thirds. Here comes MF over the top. Gale forces in them, puts the ulti down. Vulcan's here, lost has a kite away. He's gonna get deleted by Misfortune. Stun's not gonna find a kill either. Either Power of Evil now has to run. Vulcan Ooh. can't find the flash. Yet. Spika has the time to put on the emote mid-fight, but Vulcan's still burning. Is Vulcan dead? Yes. A kill goes through to Huni. Good Ignite comes across. Nice stopwatch. Buys some time for Spika. Fudge a bit low, but there's a bear right on top, and a triple kill comes through for Zven. And Cloud9 just break a hole in the bottom of the bucket. All the water's gone. <laughs> now they're going to run straight inside the base as well. There goes finally the first inhibitor tower down for them. They just broke the door wide open. Those uh, death timers, though, not long enough yet. Lost and Sword Art will come up because they died so early in the fight. And Cloud9 not going to give that comeback chance there to TSM. Not overstaying, heading to the Baron instead. No smite for TSM. So it has to be maybe a Void Seeker possible steal. Something crazy. Huni Q. It's Cho'Gathel, right? Just like just 7,000 damage. Oh, he didn't get it. Weird. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Expected situation there. Baron picked up no problem. I believe all five have the buff. It's Vulcan's already respawned. TSM maybe look for the desperation play, but they are outnumbered. This can't be a good fight. There is no way this is going to work, but they're going to try. Package? Sword Art has to flash away. Blabber gets a bit low. Package is nice. It's one for zero so far. Huni gets shuffled right back in. There's two, there's three, and PoE is left alone. And the entire time, Spika was never going to be in that fight. They opted into a 4v5 while down in gold. I understand the desperation. They wanted a yeah. drop in the bucket, but the whole thing was kicked over. And it's time for Cloud9 to end the game. All right, Blabber's going to lead the charge then. The most move speed on the squad means he gets to be the first one. At the oh, next Spica. turn, he's looking for Spika. Oh. Tiger, Phoenix. He's running as fast as he can. He's got 10 stacks of the Dark Seal. He's sadly no Majais. If he had Majais, he'd have more move speed and more AP, Ooh. and he might have won the fight. You know, if he had just built Majais and sold the Bramble Vest, maybe that was a kill. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to say, count it for Cloud9. Next is third, number one under fire, and number two short to follow. That one's going to drop here. Nice little shove onto Fudge, but that's going to be another sub-31. Nice by Vulcan. Pushes back Sword Art. Stun's going to land on the Blabber, but it's not going to be enough. The Nexus will fall, and Cloud9 will smash TSM. This one definitely action-packed from the beginning. Unfortunately for TSM, all of the action was going Cloud9's favor. Uh, a couple of dives here in the early game. Trying to go after Perks really deep. He gets a counter kill. Actually turns into two since Vulcan then follows up. Followed by the bottom one as well with the chase down kills. And, and Cloud9 really expertly pushed that ahead. This is something that they have been known for for multiple years here. Just taking this early lead running it straight into the ground with it. Uh, Blabber, yeah. once again, extremely good game. Uh, this this guy has been on fire. Yeah, uh, definitely incredibly good. You threw two bands at him, he still grabs the Udyr, still first blood, still out farms, gets a lot of the dragon control as well. He's an outstanding player, and, and it's hard to push Blabber off of a champion where he will be outstanding. He is, I think, my pick right now for the best performing jungler in the LCS. Obviously, there are other great names out there that can clearly challenge him. Th there are a lot of good players out here in this league, but Blabber right now feels like the, the best one to me. His team around him, obviously incredible as well. They, they narrowly lost in Game 5, right, for the LCS lock-in tournament. They, they are one of the front runners for qualifying for MSI here. They are now one of only They're Undefeated. Teams undefeated, yeah, only one of uh, them and 100 Thieves, and, and they beat 100 Thieves, right? Uh, that also went to five games, sure, but uh, they are kind of heads and shoulders right now as a very strong team. Uh, I, I liked Perks' Azir. This now makes it, um, it takes his win rate above LeBlanc's now, above 75%. Rise so, next, bam. rise next, yeah. rise he, next. He, he's got some wins to go to catch the rise up there, unfortunately. That one's going to be a bit, but either way, Cloud9, a well-oiled machine and a well-played game to take down TSM. After the break, we'll hear from Vulcan on Cloud9 in the Verizon Post interview, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS here for a Verizon post-game interview with C9 Vulcan. Now, Vulcan, it feels like you were all determined to kind of make up for the longer game that we had before it, you know, keeping this a lot more on the quick side. What were your thoughts just going into this matchup against TSM once again? Um, I mean, it wasn't really any different from any other game. I think we took it, you know, the same as if it was any other team. I think we're mostly focusing on ourselves right now. And TSM feels like any other opponent, I think, they still have like to did they still need time to gel and, and get comfortable with each other it seems so um yeah i didn't think we would be challenged too hard and uh i think we had a pretty comfortable game yeah, there's a lot of talk on the desk about the identities of these two teams because obviously C9 versus TSM is a very old tale, but so many of the players have just kind of rotated through and Cloud9 has went through quite the transformation as well. We've heard some remarks about the fact that this era was Zven on the team a bit more serious, a bit more hardcore. Can you speak anything to kind of the mentality that is on this Cloud9 squad having been on it for over a year now? Yeah, I mean, I think we're like able to have fun together and, and make jokes when it's time. But we also, you know, have kind of the switch where we, we turn it on when it's time to get serious. And I think that's something that you need to be able to do, obviously, when, you, when you're a pro player. So um, I think we have a pretty good balance between being serious and kind of uh, being like a, uh, how people refer to the old clown line as like being more laid back, relaxed and, uh, you know, playing with friends. I think we still have that vibe going with us. But uh, yeah, it's also very, very important to be able to flip the switch and and put your game on when it's time. That ability to flip the switch, it seems like it's very similar to last year, right? Despite a couple of the players changing, that core is still the same. We're still seeing that aggression right at the start. So in generally speaking, when trying to go for those titles and keeping that at the forefront of the mindset, does that instill any additional confidence in Cloud9 to be having another strong start again? Or are you a bit more tempered, like you're saying, kind of focusing on yourselves and taking it game by game? Um. I mean, we, we try to not put too much pressure on ourselves. I think, obviously, the community wants us to do very well with the addition of perks, right? But um, we kind of know that we need to take time to make sure that we build the right foundation, the right, you know, basics, the right concepts that we, we kind of, you know, refer to um, to concepts in games where, like, sometimes it's hard to explain something in the game, but you need to, like, kind of make a, like, have a word for it so that everyone knows exactly what's happening in the game and everyone's on the same page. So we're kind of building stuff like that. And we, we know that's going to take time for, for us to get at our ceiling. But it, it's nice to see that uh, even though we're not there yet, um, we're still competing you know, with every NA team. Uh, but to be fair, they also have to, to do the same, right? So yeah, I think we'll be much better by the time the end of the year comes around. And also, you know, we're pretty good right now. So it uh, feels good to be this confident, I guess. That level of competitive nature was very clear on the side of Cloud9 in this game where you had control. You do have to face Immortals next. And before yesterday, maybe that would have seemed a bit more, I guess, scripted in the heads of you and others or other fans of Cloud9, rather. But they did just take down at Team Liquid. They did have a strong start. Is there anything that's kind of racing through your mind when going against this roster that is still very untested? Um, yeah, honestly, I'm not too sure what to think of Immortals, I think, obviously, they had a pretty strong showing versus Team Liquid, but Team Liquid, to be honest, didn't look that strong this week. Even the game today, they looked kind of shaky in the early game. Um, they did look like pretty uh, dominant in the later stages, but early game, it was pretty shaky. So, yeah, I'm not sure what to make of Immortals. We never scrimmed them with that roster, so it'd be the first time we play against these players. Um, but I think uh, Revenge won't be able to do what he did to Alfari again, not to, not to fudge. And... Uh, you know, other parts of the map are going to hold down their lanes perfectly well, and maybe we'll see some 2v2 kills in the bind as well. So I think, uh, again, like, we're not worried about anyone in the LCS right now. I think Team Liquid is, uh, and Honor Thieves, to be honest, are the only challenge to us uh, as of right now. Um, so tomorrow I'm not very worried now. Well, we'll have to tune into that matchup to see if this prophecy comes through, through, through fruition, rather. Vulcan, thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you. What a performance we had from Cloud9 here against TSM today. Let's go ahead and break it on down on the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, the Tigress. Cloud9 snagging the victory over TSM in this one and holding true to their last year's identity of the fastest team in the league so far with a current average game time of 29.40. The only team under that 30 minute mark on average at this point. And I guess it's no surprise that it ends quick uh, if it starts quick with some early action in the top lane.
Yeah, so it's Blabber versus another TP Ignite, Camille. I think this gank was actually really well executed. I know we've talked about fault on this broadcast before and whose fault it is if you if you die in top lane like that. I actually just thought that gank was really well executed by them. Agreed. I don't really know what's up with TSM this game, but I felt like their entire early game, it kind of just screamed desperation. It's like one of those scenarios where I've been in myself. I'm like, oh crap, the enemy team is so good. I have to make these plays early game or we're going to lose later. And you saw them try at top. You saw them try at mid. You see them try at bottom. And it's just like, why are you guys diving a level 6 Alistar and a misfortune with cleanse? Like, I, I don't know the thought process that's going on here, but... Uh, maybe there just wasn't a thought process. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. The ex like you said, like it's one thing to be like, oh, the Udir showed up and they they outplayed us and yada yada yada. But to use the you know stun alt on the Alistar, who's level six, is just con confusing. Maybe he thought it was blown from the mid play that happened just before it, but that just speaks then to poor communication on the side. So it's it's you know like you you can we're not exactly sure because we don't hear comms who's calling what, but there's clearly something going wrong with these plays. It's nice to see the aggression, but. Some plays like that one are so far off from working that it does definitely makes you scratch your head a little bit. That was a really sick combo by Vulcan, by the way. I like how he ulted and then comboed the backline with the Misfortune ulti. Not going to lie, they won that 2v3 even without the Udyr. And I don't know if I would have done that if I was Alistar. So that was, that was really well played by them, too. And, and it's tough, right, because we have this conversation around uh, where uh, proactivity becomes desperation, to your point, High, because TSM did make a lot of proactive plays, ill-informed or not, to kind of extend the game and keep it somewhat interesting and active. In fact, it was here in an extended chase down where C9 would ultimately find their way to cut off TSM's escape and snag a massive team fight victory. They got that damned Alistair, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they ended up kind of all funneling into this, this uh, you know, alcove and then shooting fish in a barrel for perks there. Just able to go in for a really clean scoop up. Um, and, you know, it was mostly all C9 this game. I and mean, you look at their goal graph, it was pretty much that kind of up and to the right that you really want to see. You could also you know, make Perks the argument. Was to tweet during the games, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, 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 you could also make the argument that why are they, why are TSM kind of fighting down there in the first place? Like again, I think, I, I do like talking about aggression, and I do like, uh, you know, hyping up. Like, I, I like when teams go for things, even if it ends up looking really bad. Um, but I also think if you don't end up executing the play, then you have to step back and be like, okay, what, what went wrong here, and what can we do in the future that will um, help make sure it's a success next time? Lastly, Mark, I just want to get your opinion on uh, kind of the, the way that C9 has so far approached the regular season here. To me, it's starting to feel, again, very reminiscent of last year's Cloud9. Essentially, Blabber making his way to the top lane over and over and over again, while Vulcan and Sven are left to their own devices, largely in the bot lane, to navigate that. And so far, so good. Yeah, I mean, this is a C9 roster where I think the, like the sky's the limit right now. I know, uh, you know, they had a tough five-game series for Team Liquid, but Fudge in these last few games has looked substantially better than he did in that series against Team Liquid. You know, uh, and Perks is starting to come online. You know, being playing a lot better, coordinating with his team. So, in the jungle and the bot lane, we're we're hulking out during lock-in the entire time, and the rest of the team is leveling up around them. And this is exactly what you want to do for your new player, right? Like, you want to set them up for success. You want to give them the counter pick, and then you want to give them jungle attention. And I think it's great that C9 are focusing around Fudge and being like, we still believe in you. We don't care what the community says. And this is exactly how you set up a new player. Super solid C9 victory here in game four of the day. We do have one more before we close it all out. We got Golden Guardians facing off against Immortals right after this.